Continuing with our function, in this lecture I'm going to demonstrate the use of a formula expression. A formula expression is reminiscent to the formula in the well-known Microsoft Excel program. It enables us to conduct complex calculations using various functions to achieve the computation goals. Like the previous examples, I will continue building upon the already created function. Right now, the function returns a number based on the preference stored in the database for a given person ID. I am interested in making the following addition. I want that every number that the function currently returns, which is pi or e, will be subtracted from the number 2, and that the absolute of this calculation will be returned as the final outcome of the function. The result of this calculation is still a number, so there is no need to change the result data object. Also, the input parameter of person ID needs to stay in place. What we do need to change is the top expression. I will create a new top expression of type formula and use the already existing case expression to get my desired result. I will give this formula a name and some texts. The screen of the formula looks more complicated than what we have seen so far, but there is no need for alarm. In a bit, you will see that things can't get any simpler. Let's review the different parts of the screen. On the bottom left, we have the context list. The context list is the available variables of the business rule. It mainly consists of the input of the function object. But you already knew that. On the bottom middle, we have a set of buttons. The upper ones are mathematical and logical operators. The lower ones are for direct inputs. For every type of value, there is a dedicated button. A number literal will be inserted via the number button. A string literal will be inserted via the string button, and so forth. On the bottom right, we have a list of possible formula functions. There are all kinds of them. They are grouped into different categories. In order to not confuse with the function object, I will address these formula functions as functionalities. The upper part is where the formula is composed. When adding elements to the formula, they will be shown here. To achieve my goal, I need to use the absolute functionality, so I will click on it to add it to my formula. The functionality is added to the formula along with parentheses. Any arguments of the functionality need to be put between those parentheses. This means we have to put the subtraction calculation inside. See the yellow marked cursor? This tells us where the next element is going to be added. Right now, it is where it is supposed to be, but if it doesn't, we can use the move cursor buttons to adjust its location. To demonstrate this, I will first enter the case expression into the formula even though the number 2 should get in first. To add the case expression, I will right click on the formula window and choose the appropriate option from the menu. Now I need the cursor to be behind of the case expression, so I will move it one step to the left. I can now add the number 2. To achieve this, I will use the number literal button. All is missing now is the minus sign. 
which I can easily add to the formula by clicking on the minus button. That's about it. I will activate and save the formula. See those move token buttons? They work in a similar way to the move cursor buttons, only these two are adjusting the position of the selected token or formula element. To demonstrate their functionality, let's assume I want to subtract the number 2 from the case expression and not the other way around, so I need to correct the formula. I can easily do it with the help of these buttons. To return to the original formula, I will enter the display mode without saving. To test my formula, I can use the simulation tool straight from the formula screen. No need to get back to the function. I will paste the person ID that gave us the pi number in the previous lecture. Well, that seems fine to me. To finish the work, we need to activate and test the function object. This is all too easy, don't agree? Perhaps this is a good time to review some of the previous lectures to recall how we got thus far. In the next lecture, I'm going to talk about the decision table expression, which in my mind is the most useful expression of them all.